Uh, I think he's a very good stand-in. <laughs> so, Raymond, the floor is yours to present the view of Paho. Thank you, Mark. I cannot speak on behalf of Paho, but I know a lot of what we have achieved together with Paho, as uh, we have been very instrumental in getting Paho to start the regional action plan on dementia. The topic that uh, we asked Dr. Cayetano to address was to uh, give us an overview of what are the achievements now that we have the WHO global plan and now that we have the Pau regional plan. You got already some information from Mark just now of what was adopted last week, the WHO global plan. And so I will be highlighting for you from this perspective that Dr. Cayetano wrote to me yesterday. Dear Raymond, if you can discuss the relevance of the PAHO strategy and plan of action with the participants, that will be of great value. The time frame of the strategy from the PAHO is 2014 to 2019. Not much time is left, and time is of essence. We need to encourage the participants to engage in the formulation of their own local plans. Each country has its particular needs and resources. Therefore, their plans need to reflect that. Hence, we are in a good setting. I did a count. Mark asked me if everyone that said that they would be here are here. Yes, I have 10 countries here from our region. And let me tell you, the PAHO consists of 42 member states. We have some dependencies in the Caribbean, and so they are represented by either the Netherlands or by the UK or by France. But we talk about um, more or less 35 countries that we have in the Caribbean, 32 non-Latin Caribbean countries and dependencies. And so what we are doing here is actually bringing together the majority of the region of the Caribbean. But that's also the majority of the region of the states, of the territories in the PAHO. So no wonder that it was through the CARICOM that the NCDs became an issue on the agenda of the World Health Organization because they first pushed it in the PAHO. It went to the UN, the 2011 conference, and the country of Trinidad and Tobago was very instrumental in getting that argument also because there was a lot of persons in the country that were affected. And it was in 2011 that dementia was brought into that NCD conference as being the fifth major non-communicable disease. Very important because that's how in 2012, when we were lobbying to get a national development, a national dementia plan, for all the countries of the region, that the governments of the region said, but dementia is too expensive for me. That's why it did not come into the NCD. The WHO in 2012, as Mark identified, recommended all the countries of the world to come up with a national development plan as a public health priority. But, as he told you also, from the 119 countries in the world, it's only 29 have a national development plan, which is 
of all the countries in the world. And as he said, our region, until now, let's go for the reason why the plan came up. So the conference team is no time to lose. Let me go back. No time to lose. Why not? Dr. Cayetano presented us since last year this slide. Here you see all kind of regions of the world. And the two red ones is first the Caribbean, and the next one is Latin America, where we have a highest incidence and prevalence of persons that are affected with dementia. Compared to the rest of the world, how come in the Caribbean more people affected comparatively? The percentage is 8.5 for the Caribbean and for Latin America as a whole on 9 point, almost 9%. Percent. That's for research to establish. How come? What is more frightening in our region that there will be an increase in the number of people with dementia in the Americas. You see the blue one, that is for the Americas, and the red one is for the Caribbean. And what you see is that the projection for 2030, which is 13 years from now, will show a doubling of the amount of persons living with dementia. And guess what? In the block that you see at the left side, that was from 2010, a lot of them passed away already. So when we say doubling, it doesn't mean, oh, this person from then, and now there came still a 50%. No, it's new persons. So it is more frightening than it looks in just a graph. So what was the vision of the WHO plan? There must be a world in which dementia can be prevented and that people with dementia and their carers can live well and that they receive the care and the supports that they need to fulfill their potential with dignity, respect, autonomy, and equality. The goal of the plan with a time frame from 2017 to 2025, is to improve the lives of people with dementia, as Mark showed us already in his slides, but also from the carers and the families. So while decreasing the negative impact of dementia on them, as well as on the communities and the countries, we are now in 2017, seven years they want for the whole world to reach there. No time to lose. The power plan, the time frame is from 2015 to 2019. We are now in 2017. In September, when they come together again in the PAHO meeting in Washington, it's two years later, and they will have to do a new, as they have scheduled to do, evaluation. Every two years, they look at the plan. What, how far we is, how far we are. So the goal of the plan is to promote universal access to health and universal health coverage with quality interventions also for people who are at risk of dementia. In order to help them recover or maintain their functional capacities to prevent or avoid dependence and to improve their quality of life and the well-being of their families and caregivers. Who doesn't want that? So we all in it, we all want it. And so by the PAHO, you see that they have some principles brought up as universal health coverage, because not everybody has that coverage, access to health. Human rights should be respected, also of the persons with dementia. 
and their family members. The practice should be evidence-based. There must be a life course approach, not only for people with old age. Dementia is not only a thing of people with old age. Multi-sectoral approach, different ministries have to be involved, stakeholders have to be involved. And then the uh, issue of ethnicity, gender, and equity. You see, the ones that I have bolded, because they come back also in the WHO plan. But interesting is this life course approach. Yesterday, we were invited to have an interview on the TV, and the reporter asked us, dementia is something for older persons, for old people? No, it starts already very early, the development of the condition. The only thing is you don't see it. But when it becomes manifested at older age, yes, then we say, oh, that's an old age thing. But what we discovered is that development of dementia and Alzheimer's, for instance, research showed that it's already 25 years before you can see, hey, I have a disposition for this development. So what to do about that? Life course approach. As we have seen, that lifestyle is a very important factor for non-communicable diseases as a risk factor. That is also for dementia the case. So where do you start to influence the lifestyle? When you're older in age or from small, from since you're a baby, not getting the breast milk, how are you being fed? How are you being brought up? And so we have to look into that. The WHO, as I said, and Mark showed it already, they have also these principles of human rights first. It's first and foremost respect for the dignity of a person that we have to respect, not only the right to health, but all the human rights. The empowerment and the engagement of the people with dementia and also of their caregivers, the Alzheimer's associations is one way to empower them, organize them, and be together a stronger voice. The evidence-based practice, the multi-sectoral collaboration, universal health, and what the WH did, they added social coverage. The power plan only looks at the healthcare coverage as a thing for medical care. But we know that care is also a social issue, has a social cost. To bring someone home to look at my loved one when I am not available, I have to pay for it. And that cost, because of the dementia condition, can that also be involved? So this is a very good addition of the WHO, right, that we have to tap into. The equity issue and then the appropriate attention for dementia from prevention, cure, and care. So the difference between the WHO plan adopted last year, last week, is that they concentrate on seven areas of strategic action. Whereas the PAHO said, we have five lines of action. What's the difference in the name? The one is an area and the other is a line. But the good news is that as Mark showed you, these were the seven slides that he presented of all these areas that the WHO says all countries must concentrate on it. Public health priority for dementia, awareness and friendliness, the risk reduction, diagnosis, treatment and care, and then the support for family and the dementia carers and the information systems for dementia and research and innovation. So the proposed actions that they brought are detailed. I want you to look at the three columns. You will get the slides and the details. I'm not going into that. But so they have recommendations there, actions there. For the first column is for the member states, represented by the governments. So we should look at that. 
And now we should go to the government and say, what about this? How far you is? And can we do something? Look at the third column. That is for the stakeholders, as they say, the partners. When we present ourselves as a partner to government, then we say, we can do this and this and this for you once you do this and this and this for me, for we. And this is where I find this WHO plan very uh, inclusive. Usually, the, the governmental plans always talk for governments. And that is understandable because a WHO and a PAHO is actually made up of governments. And they have people employed that have to think for all those governments. But with this plan, they included us too. They included us as consumer organizations. They said, we have to strengthen ourselves. So this is a way. Come to an Alzheimer's University and get better prepared. Participate active, actively in policy making and reform. Until now, we were not heard. So this is an opportunity. It's the plan that tells us, so we can claim it. We will be there, we will provide our proposals, our input, what else can we do for you? Support implementation of dementia policies and legislation. Now that the plan is there, we want to implement it, so government, you also have to do your part to facilitate our input in that plan. Raising the dementia awareness, as Mark already said. Promote awareness, dementia friendliness, human rights, and equity. We are good in raising awareness about disease. That's what we did. We are also good in asking, can you take us a little more in consideration? Be, become a little more friendly for me. This morning the news came that one of our persons with dementia from Barbados, because she had to take off the shoes for the security, she got so confused that she didn't make it on the plane. So it's just a little detail of how friendly we are in our society and how important it is to understand such a person so that we still can get them right to participate and be in such an event. So human rights, that we didn't do so much. It is coming up now. Last year, at the Council meeting of Alzheimer's Disease International, it was adopted that we are going to address human rights. And together with Dementia Alliance International, as Alzheimer's Disease International, we are addressing especially the Convention for the Persons with a Disability. That people with dementia, with an invisible disability, also can be in the plan and addressed. But that is only for the ones that have a diagnosis. So we have to address the issue that also when I don't have a diagnosis, I still have human rights. My family has rights. And who is there to defend our rights? So this is in the plan. We can address it. And equity, why is it that in some countries there is so much more possible for persons with dementia and their family members and in others not. Equity means provide them with the means that we can get more equal treatment everywhere. Promote inclusion and the engagement and the support implementation. Now, the dementia risk reduction, what is there in it for us as partners? Support mainstream public health strategies for healthy lifestyles. I opened a newspaper yesterday in the car together with Norma. And there was a nice article about no sugar, no salt, and a lot of other nice recommendations. I think it's from the Healthy, Consumer Co uh, Healthy Co um, Caribbean Coalition. Because that is also good for us. Bring down the risk of developing your high blood pressure, developing your risk of getting a heart or a stroke, and then, as a consequence, vascular dementia, but also develop the risk of other dementias like Alzheimer's. So good news that this is already being happening, and we have to tap into that. Promote dementia risk reduction activities. Disseminate evidence-based information risk reduction and prevention. And as I told the reporter in the TV interview yesterday, 
it's not only about talking about the persons that is affected. And usually we as Alzheimer's organizations, we have that problem, we only talk about our constituents. We also have to talk about the rest of the society that is not affected, but that can become affected if they don't do nothing about it. And so that is where we have to be participating in that part too. Dementia diagnosis, treatment and care, evidence-based user-friendly information, what is available, how can we tap into that? Because everybody wants to know, okay, I want to be diagnosed, but also I want to be treated, and what is there for me? Which medication is appropriate, which not, and all of that. Provide training, education of the people in the health sector that try to provide us with all these facilities. A lot of them are not so well aware of what dementia is all about. Advocate for the rehabilitation and the re-enablement so that we can participate back in society. Until now, the strategy was keep them home or send them to a nursery home. And once you have deposited them in home or there, they're not in the society, and so you, we don't see them anymore. Here. But we want to see them involved, and this is in the plan, so we can tap into it, bring it out, and bring out our loved ones too, so that we and our caregivers also can be included again. Support for dementia carers. We have to promote for the carer protection, his rights, and assist in the providing the carer training programs. Government has a part to do, but we too the information systems and the research, that is very logical. We have to be advocates for that to be in place. So the global targets, Mark highlighted them already, very interesting. I told you we have 190 countries. If you say, for instance, with the first target, that there must be policies, strategies, plans, and a framework for dementia, and you say it's 75%, they want 143 countries to have a plan by 2025, seven years from now. So the question was just now, what about Caribbean? If we have 32 countries, regions, dependencies, the Americas is 22% of the 190 countries. And the Caribbean is the majority in it. So it is very important that we know these numbers and that we say, will my country be in the 25% of the WHO? Or will our region be with our 32 countries and territories, the ones that will have one by 2025? That's what the WHO wants. So because Mark highlighted these things already of the global targets, it's good to measure if you make progress. But based on a human rights premise that everybody should be treated equal, doesn't matter where you live in the world and what's your country name, you should have the same access to what is in the plan. So what did the PAHO say for 2015 and 2019? You see here, promote plans, policies, and programs that promote respect for human rights of the persons with dementia. Establish interventions in the health system and the health services networks. Implement quality long-term care systems. Development of human resource training and improve the research and the surveillance capacity. Looking at how they want to do that. Now, important is that they want to address, by respecting human rights, the risk factor reduction. So here you see it's not about the person that has affected or has already affected. This is the persons that are not affected for them not to get it. Risk reduction. Prevention. It's for them, for the rest of the society, not for the caregivers and the persons that we have right now that we are representing. Reduction of the dependence, that is what 
will happen, keep the person with dementia as long as possible, that he can be independent. Don't decide for them. But even when they are affected, how you will respect their rights? Provision of dementia care, including long-term dementia care, should be addressed, should be improvement. Norms have to be established for us to get there. So the regional targets, interesting that in the PAHU plan, we spoke about 42 member states for the Pan American Health Organization. Look what they want to see in 2019. The number of countries and territories that have a policy plan and a program should be from seven, 2015 was seven, increased to 13 only with five countries. So that was an agreement of all the ministers of the region. Will we be in the five? And we have, I told you, 32 countries, territories. Which of the five from us will be the ones from the whole Pan American Health Organization? So we have a nice challenge there. We have to exceed the 13. We have to look what we can do. So interventions from five countries, they want to go to 16 countries that are reducing stigma and stereotype by coming up with all kinds of policies for interventions. The interventions for prevention and quality care strengthen the capacity of the health systems and bring the different multi-sectoral integration in practice by involving the community, the family, the caregivers, and the individuals themselves. How many countries they want to see that have a policy or that are addressing this? They have now five, four, seven countries that do a different part of it, and they want them to become 15 of the 30 the 42 from the Pan American Health Organization. That's for two years from now. Quality long-term care. Implement that quality care, address the need of the dependent persons, but also of their families, the caregivers, based upon a primary health care approach. Good. Respecting their human rights, gender equality, not only the women have to stay home to address with the loved one, and equity within the strategic framework of universal health access and universal health coverage. So, as you know, the family, and especially women, have usually been the main providers of long-term care. But their capacity to do so will be limited because more persons come in and being affected. Most countries in the region either do not have resources or infrastructure to ensure long-term care for supporting caregivers. So there's a dilemma that has to be addressed. We can't bring it all to the institutions. So we have to do something about that. Now, what are the targets that they set? From five countries, they want to have 15 countries that will have a community-based program and services to support elderly people and their caregivers in continuing living in their own homes. The focus is keep them home. And you can understand why. Because they said that's cheaper than bringing them to a nursing home. Number of countries and territories that have programs to support the informal and the formal caregivers of older people with dementia from 12 countries that have something like that right now, it should become 25, so it should double. But then we still, from the 42, not even half. The number of countries and territories where the health authority has an audit system for evaluating the providers of long-term care, the institutions, how are they doing? What quality of care are they providing? From the, six, from the 10 countries that have something like that, now they want to double it to 20 countries for 2019. Are all countries in that? Human resource training, that is to prepare all these people. Not only the ones that is professional, but also the family caregivers. To address the needs of the persons with or at risk of dementia. Stigma, 
bad attitudes, lack of knowledge, and understanding about these conditions have to be addressed. There are caregivers at home that think that these symptoms of dementia, that's old age thing. They don't know better. And then how they will talk with them, all of that. It's so important not to get them aggravated and agitated. We know that. So this is so important that we train all those people that want to care, that want to be there for a loved one affected. The number of countries and territories that have incorporated a set of basic competencies in undergraduate and graduate programs, that is for the schooling of those health professionals. There is none yet in the Pahu country and in the region, and they want to have at least eight by 2019, two years from now, three years from now. Then the research and surveillance, very important. Follow the persons that are uh, having dementia, but also not only look only at the dementia, but also at their other um, effects, health risks that they have. Some have multiple things that, to address. And when you have dementia, it's more difficult to address that. So must be addressed. Number of countries and territories that have included indicators of disability, dependency, long-term care in the national health information system, from two countries until now, it should become eight. From the 42. So the plan of the PAHO, as we see here, is very conservative and very prudent. It's understandable because it was ministers of health. And when you say, okay, I want to have that, then you have to put your money where your mouth is. So I told you, I'm not speaking for PAHO. Because Dr. Cayetano would not have said it like that. Because Dr. Cayetano works for the governments. But we, being a partner with them, we understand their position also. And so look at the message from Dr. Cayetano. It is very important to prioritize dementia in the Caribbean countries. The message that I would have liked to deliver is that participants need to be cognizant that their ministers made a commitment at the PAHO Directing Council to adopt the strategy and the countries need to be made accountable. Participants need to have clarity of their role as advocates to place dementia on the public health agenda of their countries. We can be instrumental to get it there. And the anecdote that Mark told us about the minister of Costa Rica. When I went with Dr. Roman, I had to attend a different conference there for aging. And I contacted our Alzheimer's organization and I came in contact with Dr. Roman. Never in his life he went to a ministry. Never in his life he knew that there is a minister of public health that he has. Yeah, they know, but never in contact. So I tell him, before I leave from here, I want to go with you. I want to visit there. And we don't go empty-handed. We go with a draft national plan. So we had a template. We worked it out. You can't go to the minister without going to your board. So he had to address a meeting urgently with the board. And we sat with them. We went through it. They said, wow. Because they recognize a lot of what is being said there. They need that. And then before I had to leave on Saturday to Friday, the vice minister of health received us, and she was the mental health uh, specialist in the country. So she welcomed the plan. Pictures were taken, and that is how the dementia plan from Costa Rica came about. You start, and then you continue. It was still a long way and a long fight, but there we, for that detail, we go further. But what Dr. Cayetano is saying here is what we try to do and I gave you an example of one country, a few other countries, you will hear that later, but then here. If you don't advocate, you get nothing. So this is not my message, this is Dr. Kayetan in the email she sent for me to convey to you. You are important. Your role as an advocate to place the mention on the public health agenda of your country, only you can do that. And we can help in that. Please feel free to provide my contact information if they have any questions. So don't ask me nothing. 
and have a productive conference. Here is Dr. Claudina Cayetano with all the information. I have your email so I can send it to you. That's one. Now if you have it digitally so that you can use it and do your presentations with this in your respective country. Thank you. I think I was within the 30 minutes, right? And I didn't want any questions because I'm not Dr. Cayetano. Still, if there are questions or comments, I think it is very consistent with my first presentation. And, and she, she sees it right. And that means that there is a, is, is a kind of duty for us as 